Well, back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, Dr. Kosli Adirubigbe will be joining us this morning, a uh, female genital mutilation survivor and advocate as well. Uh, she's of the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria. Well, according to the United Nations, more than uh, 200 million women and girls alive today have gone through female genital mutilation, which is the FGM procedure. It has also reported that in 2023, about 4.2 million girls at risk have been subjected to FGM. Meanwhile, the United Nations Population Fund estimates shows that the disruption of school attendance is linked to the coronavirus, which could cause 2 million or more cases of FGM to happen over the next decade unless serious actions are taken. Nigeria has the third largest number of women and girls globally who have been caught. And uh, according to the United Nations Children's Fund, in 2012, the United Nations General Assembly named 6th of February the International Day of Zero Tolerance of FGM aiming to enlighten the world of brutal practice and gain to support and eliminate it. Well, the theme for this year is that partnership with men and boys to transform social and gender norms to NFGM. It was also launched by the uh, UNICEF, of course, and the uh, UNFPA. It's a joint program for elimination of female genital mutilation. Uh, it's a global action course right here. Dr. Costley, it's good to have you join us once again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me on the morning show. All right. So let's talk about it. I mean, just before we get delving to what the 6th of February stands for, what exactly is uh, female genital mutilation? Thank you very much. Female genital mutilation is um, the cutting of female a reproductive organ for non-medical reason. I'm not going to go into the World Health Organization definition. I'm just going to say it the way we can understand. Um, female genital mutilation is also known in communities as cutting. People, the masses are able to relate with cutting because they are, most times they compare it with male circumcision, male cutting. But the truth is that female genital mutilation and male circumcision are different things in different things entirely. They do not relate in any way. And that is why we prefer to use the word mutilation for um, female cutting because it is actually mutilation. It has no medical benefit. It has no health reason. It is an extreme form of violence against women and girls. So it, uh, it usually what is done in female genital mutilation is that the, the some parts or the whole of female external reproductive um, organ is cut away. Usually in Nigeria, the most targeted organ um, in the female reproductive, external female reproductive system is the clitoris. So they either cut part of the clitoris or cut the whole of the clitoris. Usually, again, some go to the extent of cutting the other organs that are also in the external female reproductive system, like the labia majora, the labia minora. These are medical words, but the, I'm, I'm just talking about the organs that you can see um, in the female uh, external reproductive organ. Usually when some people cut, they do not only stop at cutting, they also go ahead to even stitch the, um, the external female reproductive system together and also just leave a little hole for urine and menstrual fluid. This is very, very harmful. This is an extreme form of torture and violence. In this part of the world, in um, most states in Nigeria where FGM is being practiced, Girls have been caught as early as eight days. Some are caught as late as 13 years, 16 years, and some before, just before they get married. There's also one form of female genital mutilation that I, I... Uh, Dr. Cosley. Okay, so there's also one form of female genital mutilation that I must mention, because that is one of the current trends that we are beginning to see is the type 4 female genital mutilation. All other things that I've said before can be either grouped as type 1, type 2, or type 3. Type 3 is the infibulation where they, you know, stitch the female external reproductive system together and just leave a small hole 
for urine and menstrual fluid. Now to type 4. Type 4 is um, piercing. They do all sorts of things to female external reproductive system, like piercing, inserting objects, labia strengthening, um, doing all sorts, anything that you do to the female external reproductive system that is not for medical reason can be categorized as type 4. In outside, they, they, this type of cutting, gishiri cutting is usually done, you know, for women just before they, uh, they give birth. Also, some people insert corrosive objects into the uh, into the uh, female external productive system into the um, uh, in, into the vagina just in the name of beauty and some other reasons um, tradition and all of that all of this um, damage to the female external productive system is categorized under female genital mutilation and it affects you know the woman it poses it poses potential risk to both immediate risk, immediate risk and long-term risk to the woman. And that is why we are leveraging on the 6th of February, which is um, recognized as the International Day for Zero Tolerance Against FGM. We're leveraging this opportunity to reach out to people to let them know that you don't have to touch the female external reproductive system. It is already created completely. It is completely created by God and it ha every part of it has a specific purpose. You don't have to strength, stretch the labia. It doesn't add to beauty. You don't have to cut the clitoris. It, it has a specific reason why it is created that way and it has specific functions that it serves. Um, so that is that is what we are leveraging on and that is why we are reaching out to you know everyone to let them know that it's high time we abandon this harmful practice that continues to pose these complications to women and girls. Very, very uh, uh, worrying, worrying details there. Um, you and FGM uh, survivor, um, what what effect does it have on on any individual who goes through it, and why do we see in Africa in Nigeria uh, this this practice of um, female circumcision? Okay, so let me quickly say that Nigeria accounts for um, one tenth of the total number of female genital mutilation survival alive today. We have an there's it is it has been estimated that there are 200 million survivors of female genital mutilation alive today. And Nigeria has one tenth of that figure. That is about 19.9 .9 million women and girls that have that have undergone female genital mutilation. They live in Nigeria and that is a very, very huge number. Um, the, the, the largest absolute number in the world. That being said, female genital mutilation complication can be categorized as both short-term, um, long-term um, complications. Short-term mean, means immediate complications, the complications that you see immediately. And long-term complications um, simply means that the complication that you get to see later in life. Also, female genital mutilation has a lot of psychological consequences. It has a lot of obstacles six consequences, which is very, very dangerous and frightening. When you talk about the immediate complication, I usually describe it as when you look at the way the procedure is being performed. Usually, the way the procedure is being performed is that it's a small child, a girl or an adolescent girl is um, usually, you know, People that perform FGM are you know, traditional cutters, um, traditional bath attendants. I'm still going to talk about the fact that some health workers are also performing FGM, but in most part of the states where it's been practiced, you know, you know, the traditional cutters, um, it, it's usually a very awkward thing. These people have little or no knowledge of the female external reproductive organ, and so the pain you know, the girl child um, down, the, the, the baby that is about to be mutilated, they pin the child down, and then they, they also get another person to either sit on the child's chest because the procedure is extremely, extremely painful. And so even a child will try to rescue herself, not to talk of an ad, uh, adult um, uh, adult girl. So they pin the child down, and then the, the cutter now goes with different sort of instruments to cut the part of the female um, external genitalia that is about to be taken off. Usually they use all sorts of instruments. Some use razor blade, some use use um, 
you know something that looks like a small axe some use some use their fingers, some use their fingers to just uproot that of a that of a baby, to just uproot the clitoris. Some use something that looks like um, a, a broken glass, a broken glass. Some use stones. They use all sort of instruments that okay, so, so because, because that, 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 that Doctor, because of time, let's let's look at the message you have for the people out there, the parents out there, your guardians out there, people who are leaders in a traditional society regarding this. Okay, thank you very much. Like 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 I said, female genital mutilation has no health benefit. It has no um, no no benefit to the girl child. It poses risk to the future, to the immediate. It poses immediate risk and um, long term risk to the girl child. Girls can bleed to death in the process of cutting. Girls can get infected when using one instrument from one girl, transferring infection from one child to another child. A lot of girls have suffered urinary retention. Sexual dysfunction is also one of the major reasons why you know why why one of the major complications that women are going through and that has destroyed a lot of homes we receive calls we run a unfp supported 24 7 Kossley, rescue line Kossley, we, men we call every now. time you know to uh, do, dr costly to, to ask for their wife and so my message to everyone at home is that when you look at the complications of fgm it is not what the life of any girl a lot of girls have died through the process of female genital mutilation a lot uh, of girls dr. have died Kossley. through the Yes. yes, I'm really sorry. Less in less than you know a minute. Can you just okay. react to this? The theme for this year is a collaborative effort, partnering with boys, uh, men, you know, policymakers, the community to eliminate uh, this practice. Uh, what exactly can be done? I'd like you to share your thoughts briefly. Men and boys are custodians of culture. They are traditional leaders. They are political leaders. And it's high time we recognize that if we must end female genital mutilation, we need the collaboration of this group of people to bring an end to this practice. They are decision makers. One of the recent FGM case in Nigeria, it was the man that gave the consent for the child to be mutilated. Men must be aware, they must be sensitized, and know that FGM is not just a woman issue, it's also a men's issue as well. Men must rise up and speak out against female genital mutilation, use their position of, of power to speak and protect the right of women and girls, because like I said, a lot of men also suffer in silence because of female genital mutilation, and we must come together to, 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 to end this practice once and for all well uh i think we have to let it uh, go at this point in time thank you so much dr costly at thank you once again for having me all right then quite chilling uh revelations by a guest uh, and uh, the dangers of this act called female circumcision or female genital mutilation very worrying. the message she's passing on is we need to desist and stop this immediately that's the size of our package. Don't forget you can follow us on our social media platforms right here on Plus TV Africa or on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. You can also check out our website as well. All the latest news information you can find on that website. Well, that's the size of it. I am Messi Ibupo. Do have a fantastic day. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.